Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So a few months ago I revealed to you my new standing desk setup, but since then I've already changed a few items around and instead of doing another full desk tour, I thought I would just give you a quick update. So this video also forms part of my What's On My Desk series and it's a new series that I started last month and the idea behind it is I will review smaller items each month and it's items that I've added to my desk setup no matter how small. Everything is linked in the video description and you can also skip ahead using the chapter selection. Okay, so first up is the new mic and mic arm that I've got. I've gone for the Blue Yeti X and the Blue Compass arm, which in my opinion is the nicest looking boom arm that's out there. So all of the videos on my channel where they are scripted and recorded while I'm sat at this desk. Now I used to have the normal Yeti and I actually used to have it just placed on my desktop here. And what would usually happen is I'd knock it by mistake and it would pick up vibrations through the table. Then I bought myself a cheap scissor arm off Amazon, and this is what I look like. And I think this cost me about £15 or $20. It did the job and it was practical. But the only thing that I didn't like about this arm is that it just looked cheap. So I ended up changing that and I went for the compass arm from Blue. So as you can see, it's got like a tube-like design rather than the normal scissor arm. And it means that all of the springs are actually inside the tube. Now I think that gives it a more kind of premium look. Plus it means you cannot trap your fingers in it. I think the overall look is really, really nice. I like the matte black finish and the little branding on the side as well. Even the part that attaches to my desk is neat. So you just screw the base to the desk, making sure it's tight enough to support it, but not too tight that it's gonna damage the desk. And then you just slide the arm in and that's it. So other than the looks, another thing that did sway me towards this arm was that most arms out there, you need to find a way to either hide or tie the USB cable. But with this one, it's actually got internal cable management. So these little clips on the side here where they open up, you slide your USB cable in and then you snap it shut. And that obviously keeps it looking really tidy. Now I did actually do a lot of research before I bought this one. And most of the reviews that I watched and I read were well, they suggested this arm would not be able to carry or be able to support many microphones. It would either drop down or it would spring up. But so far I've had no issues at all with this. I mean sure, the springs themselves, they've actually got quite a lot of tension. So you can really feel it as you're pulling it down. But there are three dials on the side that you can actually control that with. And then there's actually an extra one. So there is a hidden screw that's underneath the mic arm itself. And that's on the base. Now what you need to do is you need to turn this either left or right. And it will actually change the tension of the springs. In fact, what I've done is I've actually completely removed the screw. And it works perfectly. So I've also picked up this radius shock mount. Now this is actually designed to reduce the vibration that the mic feels while it's actually attached to this arm. And it's a kind of like a suspension mount. And it also lets me get the mic a little bit further away from the arm when I'm trying to speak into it. And I've also added one of these pop filters. Now this isn't anything new. I've been using this for about six months or so. But it definitely helps with the plosives. So that's the p-p-p when I'm actually speaking. So if I actually remove this from the arm now, you see what it sounds like. Peas, peppers, PlayStation. And then with the pop filter, peas, peppers, PlayStation. So you can really see it does make a huge difference. But yeah, moving the arm around, whether it's in front of me or I need to fold it away, is really, really easy. And it stays in place as well where I need it to. And I think it looks awesome on the desk. So I, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Okay, so if you've made it this far into the video, please drop a nice desk setup in the comments. I will give you a thumbs up as I know you're here and you've not just skipped to the end. Also, please hit that like button as it really does help me out. So looking at the microphone itself, this is the Yeti X from Blue. Now I wasn't expecting much of a difference in terms of audio quality, especially compared to the Yeti that I had before. But I've actually used this for the last five or six videos now that I've uploaded, and I'm really impressed with it. But just like with the Blue Yeti, it's very, very sensitive. So it will pick up all noises inside and outside of your room if you're not careful. Now it does come with a USB cable, but it's not USB-C and it's very, very short. So I actually swapped it out for a two meter USB-C cable instead. What I like about this mic is that the controls themselves are digital this time, and it means you can actually see the volume, gain, metering, and blending options on the mic itself just by watching the little LEDs around the dial. Now I can just press the dial and I can flick between the different modes, or I can spin it to increase and decrease. And the fact that it's got a headphone jack again, it means I can monitor my own voice as I record or listen back to it. Then tap in the front button where that mutes it, and the dial will go from green to red to show that it is muted. And then around the back, you've got the different polar patterns. So depending on the type of recordings that you're doing, you can just press this button here. But yeah, so I really like this. I think it's a nice looking mic. The boom arm itself looks really, really clean. It's definitely a lot nicer looking than some of the other kind of arms that you've got out there. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think it looks clean? 
Okay, so another new item or items that I've recently picked up are these frames from Grid Studio. So they are basically iPhones which have been dismantled and arranged on a piece of card and then framed, which I think actually looks really, really impressive. So if you look, you can literally see every piece of the phones laid out. And it's got text next to it as well, telling you what each piece is. So here's the volume button, for example. You've got the home button, the power button, and even the vibration motor. So as you can see, I've gone for the 4S, as I think it looks awesome, and I actually like the frame and the overall layout. But I also went for the 3GS as well, and that's because that was actually my first ever iPhone. So since this iPhone, I've never owned another type of phone, so I've only had iPhones. Plus the fact that I record all of the videos on this channel using an iPhone, it's got kind of a nostalgic and personal meaning behind it. But the quality of these frames, the thought that's gone into it is absolutely brilliant. A nice piece of art to either have on your shelf or on your wall, now I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the layout here, I think my shelf needs a little bit of work. I've also linked to these in the description of this video, so if you're interested, you can go and check those out. And if you want to see a dedicated video about these frames, please let me know in the comments. Um, I will definitely do a dedicated video, just like I did with the floating bulb, if I get enough interest. Okay, so next up is a mechanical keyboard. So this is called the F96, and it's from a company called Equinix. I believe that's how it's pronounced. This is the Coral C version. Now, I was tempted to go for the all black version that they have, but I actually wanted something different, something that kind of stood out and added a little bit of color to my desk. But I'll be honest, I know absolutely nothing about mechanical keyboards. I'm not gonna pretend that I do. Now, all I know is I wanted to pick one up and I wanted to use it for my script writing. So on a daily basis, I use the MX keys. Now this is my productivity keyboard and I won't be giving that up. But when I'm typing for long periods, I find the keys are just too shallow. Now this keyboard is Bluetooth, so it means it works with pretty much any device that you wish to connect it to. Now it's also USB-C, so it means I can plug it in when it's running flat and I can use my retractable USB-C cable that I've got hidden behind my monitor. Now I did show this on my full desk setup review, so this isn't anything new. Now this keyboard is really heavy, it feels solid, but that's because it's actually got a metal body as well, so there's no flex here at all. And as for typing on it, I mean, it just makes me feel so productive. I'm not sure if it's because the keys are higher or the sound of the keys that it makes when I'm tapping away, but either way, it feels really, really nice to type on. So it's also got a full RGB keyboard. Now I only use it with the lights off, but you can also use it for kind of any color that you wish, or if you really wanted to, you could go for the full RGB rainbow show instead. Now you can swap the keys out on this. Now it's not something that I'll ever do, but it's great to have that as an option. In terms of the battery life on this, it's rated at four months if you keep the lights off or just four to five days with the lights on. Now I would prefer to last longer, so I'll be keeping the lights off. So yeah, I think this looks great on my desk. It has a nice bit of color to my setup. And it's exactly what I want to go for. And it feels nice to type on as well, especially for long periods of time. And the bonus is the battery lasts for ages. Okay, so this little box is called the Nest, and it's from OrbitKey. So basically, it's a portable desk organizer that I keep kind of random items in from time to time, but it's also got some cool features as well. So what's really nice about this is it's got these little Velcro dividers, and it means you can actually create your own layout inside. So I've got things in here like my SSD, AirPods, and my MacBook hub adapter as well. But I could just move it about, and I could add any other items in there I wanted but it's also got a wireless charging function built in as well. So if you look on the back here, there's actually a USB-C port. So when it's plugged in, it will then let you charge a device on top wirelessly. So here I've put an iPhone 11 Pro, and as you can see, it's charging with no issues at all. Then when I'm done, I can just unplug everything, pack it all away, and take it with me. So I mentioned that I'm using SSD drives. Well, I'm actually using six of these SanDisk Extreme portable drives. Now I use these for backing up my MacBook, I use them for storing video content on, and I actually even use them on my Xbox and my PlayStation. And so far they've never let me down and they are extremely fast as well, so they're definitely the best choice for me. Now I've actually got these in 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, and two terabyte drives. On top of that, they're tiny, so you can see here just how small they are. They're not much bigger than a credit card, for example, so it means you can easily carry it in your pocket or in your bag. I also wanted to quickly show you this bulb. Now I did actually cover a dedicated video about this last month and it had a full review. I just needed to show it off again because it's absolutely awesome and I use it every single day. So it's basically an Edison bulb that floats above the base. And yeah, I think it looks really, really nice. So the last thing that I wanted to show you was my desk pad or my mouse mat. And this is one that I'm currently using. So I did briefly mention this in my desk setup video a few months ago and I've got a lot of questions since then about it. So I thought I'd cover it in greater detail here. So this is a wool felt pad from Grovemade. So it's actually available in four different sizes. So it depends on the kind of the style that you want to go for, whether you just want a strip or whether you want full desk coverage. But I went for the medium and I went for it in dark. 
Now it definitely complements the dark wood on my desk, I think it's like a nice contrast. So it feels really, really soft, and although it looks like it might snag or fray when you're using a mouse, for example, after six months of use, I've honestly had no issues with it at all, and I use it for about five to eight hours a day, plus it looks nice on the desk. Now, I did actually remove it just to kind of see what it looked like without the pad, and it looks awful. So you see what you think here. This is it without the pad. This is just the desk. Way too much wood. So it's definitely staying. Now, they do also do leather pads as well, and again, I have linked to that in the description. Okay, so I think that's kind of everything that I've changed in the last few months to my desk setup. So there's only a few things there, really. Well, everything else that's in the desk setup, I actually covered in my full desk review. So if you've not watched that already, feel free to watch that next. And that's where I cover things like my standing desk, my monitor, my chair, and everything else. Now, also, everything is linked in the description of this video. But what's next for the setup? Well, I'm probably going to add some speakers. I'm probably thinking of going for the A2 Plus speakers. I know they're quite popular. I know a lot of people have those. But they've got some great reviews as well. And I might add an ultra-wide monitor. Anything else you think I should add? Well, thank you. You've just made it to the end of another video. I really, really appreciate it. Well, if you did watch the full video, don't forget to drop that hidden message in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button as well as it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.